Hey there everyone, this is Raymond and I wanted to put out a video on a topic that has been on my heart for quite some time and it seems appropriate now because we're approaching Pentecost. In fact today I want to give the date, it's the 25th of May 2012 and this Sunday will be Pentecost. This Monday, I believe, in the United States of America is Memorial Day where we honor our fallen soldiers and for a lot of reasons it seems appropriate because because I believe judgment is coming upon America and the world as well. It's not just anything directed to America. And I wanted to particularly look at Isaiah 9:10. Now you might recognize the book The Harbinger. Uh, Jonathan Kahn wrote a book that has gotten a lot of attention lately. It shows a number of parallels. In Isaiah 9:10, uh, Isaiah was written about 2,700 years ago and dealt with the ancient na nation of Israel in this chapter and verse. There are so many parallels from that time to September 11th, 2001, and the aftermath, and how people dealt with what happened. Now, first of all, I have to flash up the, the fair use notice. This is for educational purposes only, and I'm not making money in any way. And all the links I have below, they're not mine. I'm just merely providing them, and uh, uh, no financial interest whatsoever. This is to let the people know what has been on my heart, and to also hopefully lead people to understand that God is calling out to us to repentance at this very moment. Now, before I go on any further, um, wanted to give credit where credit is due. It was about three years ago, in fact, maybe four, uh, 2008, where when the P.P. Simmons channel on YouTube put out a video on this, that's where I first heard about this. Um, also, Elliot Nish channel on YouTube, and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn has the Harbinger book, and also if you go to World Net Daily, there's an Isaiah 910. It's a, a documentary, a DVD documentary, based on the Harbinger book. Uh, I have links to all those below uh, in this video description if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching in a, you know, another uh, forum, maybe you can right click and sometimes they'll say watch on YouTube and that way you can get to all the links for this. And here's what we're talking about. Now 2,700 years ago, the Assyrian Empire was poised to invade and destroy the northern nation of Israel. Now there was Israel, ten tribes to the north, and two tribes uh, of the Jewish people to the south were uh, Judah, and that's after they had uh, divided. Now Israel was right next to the Assyrian Empire, and they were having a bunch of border incursions back and forth. They responded not by repentance, not by seeking God, by seeking his protection. Really, uh, I put it here, arrogance, pride, and defiance. That's why uh, uh, what happened to them eventually, the Syrians overtook the nation uh, of Israel and, and, you know, destroyed it. And I want to go further and show the parallels between that time and now. But before we go there, um, I want to show you something like this. Everyone knows the story of Jonah. Now, this is probably, at least for me, the best example of biblical repentance there is. Because you, you know the story of Jonah. Now, he wanted not, he did not want to go to Nineveh and warn the people. The, the Ninevites were enemies of Israel. He knew God was merciful and would uh, forgive if there was true repentance. So he went the other way and got thrown overboard on the ship after a storm, uh, swallowed up by a whale for three days, and then spat out on dry land. That was God's way of saying, no, Jonah, you are going to go to the city of Nineveh and you will preach against them. You will let them know that my judgment will fall on them if they do not repent. Look what happened from the greatest to the least of them. Starting with the king, the king took off his robe, of course a symbol of authority and power and status. And just imagine people today taking off their business suits, their flashy clothing, whatever it is that they've invested money in, uh, to, in, in a display of repentance. I Personally, I've never seen anything like that in my day and age, and I have not seen repentance anywhere along the lines of what happened at the city of Nineveh uh, in my time. And that's why I'm concerned for America and for the world, because I think we've lost that. You know, um, Let me go any further um, here, but before we go, um, Isaiah... Uh, chapter 9, uh, verse. just let's look at verse 10. Um, those people uh, who in pride and arrogance of heart 
say, the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Now, that's the heart of the harbinger, the warnings that were, it showed the reaction of the ancient Israelites. Well, we repeated the exact same pattern 2,700 years later. Let me show you here. Now forgive me, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because every time I record this I go over the 15 minute mark and that's my limit here. But I want to show you, of course, you, you remember the horrific scenes from September 11th, 2001. So I don't have to show you much about this. The bricks have fallen down but we will rebuild with hewn stones. Now hewn stones are chiseled or quarried out of the ground. They're not bricks made out of clay. And now, what you're looking at now is a 20 ton uh, granite uh, stone that was chiseled or quarried out of New York State and dedicated on uh, 4th of July 2004. And this has become the, the cornerstone for the new Freedom Tower. So, I mean, I want to show you coincidence after coincidence, but after a while you'll realize they're not coincidences. This is a genuine double fulfillment of prophecy that has so many elements that at the end of the day you just can't deny it. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Now, I'm showing you a sycamore tree here. This is at ground zero. This tree was struck down by a beam that came off the World Trade Center towers as they were coming down. Um, a beam struck and killed this tree here. Uh, this is at the grounds of St. Paul's Chapel. It is right at ground zero, actually right across the street from where the World Trade Center towers stood. Uh, the people, and all this I believe is unknowingly, they replaced the sycamore tree not with another sycamore tree, but with a cedar, and they called it the Tree of Hope. Now, no, this one is a uh, conifer tree, and it is it is in the same family of trees as the cedars of Lebanon that were referenced in the Isaiah 9:10 prophecy. Okay, so I'm showing you a few. You can call them at this point coincidences, but I'm trying to talk you out of that and to understand that this is God's warnings to America. It gets even stranger, guys. Um, after the event, um, a, an artist was commissioned to make a replica of the roots of that sycamore tree that was struck down. And he did that. It was cast in bronze. Bronze is a metal that represents judgment. Uh, this uh, a replica of the roots was placed at Wall Street. Now, in you know, 2008, we had the crash. Um, a lot of people believe that there will be an even bigger crash coming. But what you're doing, in fact, the sycamore tree falling down was a symbol or, uh, you know, it was judgment upon America. It, it, it exemplified that. And now to cast roots in bronze and place them at Wall Street, further judgment being pronounced upon America, all done unknowingly. The people who are doing this have no idea. And who is the most clueless people in America? Usually it's our political leaders. And here we go. Um, the day after September 11, 2001, the Senate Minority Leader, and that's Tom Daschle, uh, read word for word Isaiah 9:10. Now he said he couched it like this, and I believe that he believed this, that these were words of hope and encouragement. Senator John Edwards, uh, three years to the day of 9/11, spoke the exact same words of uh, Isaiah 9:10. I, I believe it was to the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, at that time. Well, out of the mouths of two witnesses, a thing is established. And what these leaders have in effect, in effect done is pronounced God's judgment on America, not unknowingly. And of course, both of these senators have now, 10 years la later, been disgraced. They've had scandals that I believe have forced them out of office. Um, I'm not surprised. The coincidences go even further. Um, here, I'm taking this from the Elliot Nish video. I've linked to it below. Um, please look at the second line. I've never personally looked at the Septuagint version of scripture. It is an ancient uh, Greek translation of uh, the, the Old Testament. But look, 
the bricks are fallen down, but come, let us hew stones, and cut down sycamores and cedars, and let us build for ourselves a tower. Now, uh, of course, there were the two World Trade Center towers that fell, and in addition, World Trade Center uh, building number seven. But we're, I'm thinking mainly about the two towers here. In place of them, one tower was built, a tower, not two. You would think that they would build two to replace the two. You would think they would replace the sycamore tree that had fallen down with another sycamore tree. Didn't happen. The coincidences go even further. On uh, Here in April uh, 1789, our first president of the United States was inaugurated, George Washington, of course, in New York City. It was not Philadelphia. The District of Columbia had not been built yet. Um, afterwards, uh, he and basically what amounted to to our entire federal government, our first federal government. Walk down the street from Federal Hall, New York City, to St. Paul's Chapel, pictured here, and consecrated our newly established government, our country, to God. Well, guess what? The sycamore tree that was struck down was on the plot of land right next to this church. In fact, that tree, the sycamore tree, probably saved this church from destruction. And so what in fact has happened is God has taken his warnings to the exact spot where 200 years earlier our nation was consecrated to God. So I believe the, the coincidences are being established here. God is very strongly calling us to repentance. Okay, forgive me guys, I'm going to go pretty quickly here because I have a few more slides and I have a 15 minute hard deadline with the program I'm using. What comes after Isaiah 9.10 is Isaiah 9.11. And now I don't think this is a coincidence either. Now I understand the numbers, the chapter and the verse numbers were not in the original New Testament. They were added around 1200 uh, AD to the Latin Vulgate uh, version of the Bible. Uh, but I believe that was inspired by the Holy Spirit as I do the, the King James Bible that was written in, uh, I believe, 1605 or 1611, around that time frame. Um, without reading this, uh, Isaiah 9:11 speaks of destruction to Israel after they had failed to repent by foreign invasion. And there are a number of end times watchers that have seen foreign troops on U.S. soil coming during the tribulation, which they believe is coming soon, which I believe is coming soon. Um, and uh, often China, Russia, whoever, they're, they're seeing this. I believe the Holy Spirit is moving people to warn us. Now, I put here pictures of uh, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. Now, obviously, no one is asking for repentance. No one is, they are still appealing to our national sense of pride. Now, believe me, I am, uh, uh, you know, I am very happy and fortunate to have been born in America and raised here in America. Um, but I, when God is calling you out, God is calling you out. Um, we're not getting that from our leaders. Nothing approaching what happened to the city of Nineveh when Jonah came from the greatest to the least. They repented. Think about that. That's not happening today. I want to point out something else to you. Uh, numbers matter. There were only 44 kings of ancient Israel. If you want to get um, very technical, King David is counted twice because his reign was interrupted by a coup d'etat by Absalom. Well, we also have in the U.S., Grover Cleveland was our 22nd and our 24th uh, presidents. Uh, but anyway, you count them up, 44. Um, you have a number of people, end times watchers, that have visions that uh, we would only have 44 U.S. presidents. And that will be a topic for another day. Um, again, I want to mention um, a repentance is needed. I uh, born and raised here in America. This is a hard thing for me to say. I believe that America played a great role in the history of the world. Think about World War II. Think about the Cold War preventing fascism and communism. And I understand we've had our fair share of wars that are questionable and also including uh, proponents of the New World Order, possibly Illuminati in charge. In, in you know, But it has also been 50 years that we've not allowed um, 
prayers in public schools. In 40 years that we've had legalized abortion, and I'm sorry in God's eyes, that's not okay. Um, I'm going to go through this really quickly. Um, please pause on these slides. Uh, ABCs of Salvation, I urge you to seek Jesus Christ. Admit you are a sinner. Believe in him. He is the one true Son of God. Um, and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he will save you. Thank you for watching.